Hello and welcome back to A Shot of Wildlife. Today I've made the biggest day trip I've ever made so far on this channel and I've come to a special place, Mersey Island off the Essex coast. Now I'm here for one reason and one reason only, to find the UK's only native species of scribble, the red scribble. So let me tell you why I might find them here. Over most of England, red squirrels have been completely displaced by non-native grey squirrels. But as Mersey is an island, completely cut off from the mainland except for one bridge. The greys never colonised here. Because of this, the island was deemed as a good site for a red squirrel reintroduction and just over a decade ago, 27 captive bred animals were released here. There are up to a hundred of them living here now and I would love to see one for the first time. My search started at one of the island's holiday parks where I'd been told that red squirrels were seen almost daily. I had high hopes, and if I'm being honest, I thought it was going to be a walk in the park, albeit a very big park. Unfortunately, the only wildlife I found at the caravan park were wood pigeons, including this one, which was a bit darker than any wood pigeon I've seen before. I don't know if it's just dirty, or maybe it's slightly melanistic. Just outside the campsite, I explored the traditional home of squirrels, a churchyard, but had no luck there, although a sign on the lane running up to it hinted how close I could be. I've been losing hope a little bit, but I just stopped a few people as they came out of church, and they said there are a few places on the island where I'm likely to see red squirrels a bit later on. I'm gonna take a look down this country lane now, head to a nature reserve while I'm this side of the island, but later, Fingers crossed, it's time for, to see a red squirrel. It's early spring, and some of the local birds had started to claim their territories, including this male chaffinch. This species has declined drastically across the UK in recent years, with a parasitic disease thought to be to blame. In the same tree, a robin was also announcing its presence. The males and females of this species are pretty much impossible to separate. They look the same and both of them will sing to mark their territories. It's time to move on. I'm gonna to head to Cudmore Grove Country Park and I'm sure there'll be loads of wildlife there. There still might be red squirrels, but at least they'll make the trip worthwhile if I see some things. Before my trip, I'd been told that red squirrels have been seen at Cudmore Grove, and even though it had started to rain a little, my hopes were still quite high. This is the most squirrely place I've found so far on the island, but thus far, no little red furballs. In most of the UK, where red squirrels are still found, it's around evergreen forests and pine plantations. But this isn't because they prefer it there, it's because grey squirrels cannot do so well in these places. The clouds parted for a moment, allowing me to spot a skylark as it landed in some nearby grass. These birds spend a lot of their time on the ground, and it's amazing how hard they can be to spot, and how easily they can disappear even when you have seen them. The country park runs down to the sea, and even though it wasn't exactly swimming weather, I felt obliged to at least take a look. The tide line was dashed with large rocks, and of course, I couldn't help but turn a couple of them over. I was hoping for a crab or two, but instead they were almost completely covered in edible periwinkles. Not in the mood for a snack, I tried to find a spot out of the wind to film the only bird brave enough to be on the exposed beach. This is a red shank, a species I've mostly seen at inland and coastal wetlands. It picked a bad day for a paddle and seemed to be struggling not to blow away. I moved back inland to avoid doing the same. At the country park, there was only one hide and although it wasn't on a hill, it was very welcome. 
and this hide couldn't have came any sooner really. The wind, the rain, it was all getting a bit too much and I won't lie, I'm losing hope of my chances of seeing a red squirrel. I'm really the wrong side of the island according to everybody I've spoken to but I don't know, maybe I just expected them to be like grey squirrels back in the city where you can just see them all the time. Uh, but I'm going to try to keep hope and I'm going to keep on looking anyway so cross your fingers for me now. The hide looked over some grassland, a large pond and distant fields. I could see quite a lot including this female pheasant who was on the ground close in. Despite being the size of a chicken, female pheasants are really good at camouflaging against dry grass which helps them to stay hidden if they are on a nest or trying to hide from predators. Out on the pond, several birds were braving the wind, including this coot with its white frontal shield and this moorhen with its red frontal shield. These are known as honest signals of fitness, showing how old and how healthy each bird is. Also on the pond were a pair of mute swans performing a bit of their courtship ritual where they alternate dipping their heads and preening themselves. Mute swans usually mate for life, which can be a very long time as they often live for 20 or sometimes even 30 years. In the distance, I could make out a small flock of geese. These are dark-bellied Brent geese and will probably be on their way to breed in Russia and Northern Europe. There are also light-bellied Brent geese that overwinter in the UK. These nest in Canada and Svalbard. In some trees behind the pond, a different bird species had already got started with nesting. These are carrion crows and will usually lay a single clutch of three or four eggs at the beginning of April. Whilst filming them, I noticed something really cool. A barn owl had emerged from an owl box next to the pond. Naturally, this species would have nested in hollow trees and caves, but as their name suggests, they will readily take to man-made accommodation. They usually sleep throughout the daytime, so I'm not sure why this one had decided to come out. It didn't fly, and instead spent a while staring at a nearby wood pigeon, before changing its mind and heading back inside once more. Well. How great was that? Barn Owl came out of the box, had a look around for a little while. Looked like it was going to get mad at a pigeon, but changed its mind and it's gone back away. Whew. Things are looking up. Although I had seen lots of exciting birds, they were not the reason I'd driven two and a half hours at six in the morning. I was here for red squirrels and it was time to look somewhere else. On my way to the other side of the island, I spotted this sparrowhawk walking along a country lane. Sorry about the shaky, blurry footage. This is filmed from inside my car as I didn't want to scare it off. I've never seen them walking on the ground before and have no idea what this one was doing. But after a few seconds, it took off and flew away out of sight. Well, I've just came across to a different part of the island now and this area is known as the Avenues and almost everyone I've spoken to has said it's the best place for red squirrels at this time of year. So, all I can do is try. The Avenues area looked brilliant for squirrels with large gardens and lots of mature trees. I walked, I searched and I hoped. I've been asking everyone I've seen if they've seen red squirrels lately and most people who live here say yes and uh, frustratingly most of them say they've seen them today, this morning. In fact one lovely couple let me into their garden to take a look to see if the squirrels are still there. They weren't but they've taken my number and they're going to give me a call if they see them. So uh, I feel like I'm so close, I'm so close to finding them. Um, well obviously I can be as close as I like if I don't see them, I don't see them. Despite the smile, my chances of seeing a red squirrel were quickly fading away and I knew it. I did catch this beautiful starling singing from an aerial, but both he and my camera were struggling in the wind. 
this collared dove had found a more sheltered spot and I decided to do the same. I've had a boost in two ways. First, the caffeine and the sugar from the cake. But now I've also spoke to a lady who lives locally who gets red squirrels in the garden and she's invited me round to take a look. This could be it. Within a couple of minutes, I could be seeing a red squirrel. It won't surprise you that I walked pretty quickly to the kind lady's house. Things are looking up for old Liam. The lady has invited me into her back garden. I'm sat in the windy house at the moment. And apparently the red squirrel comes three or four times a day and walks right past here. So now it's a matter of waiting a little while and hoping one turns up. I'm quite impatient, so I'm probably not going to wait too long. But let's see, shall we? The trap was set, but would a squirrel turn up? No. Well, I sat there for just over an hour, but the squirrel didn't turn up. The lady who let me in was very kind and even gave me a photograph of a red squirrel that she's taken in a garden before. So they do exist, but maybe I'm just not going to find them. I'm not giving up yet. There's a couple more places to check, but I need to get moving because the sun's going to go down in a couple of hours. The last two places on my list to find a red squirrel were in a small graveyard and around a caravan park at the far west of the island. The graveyard was fruitless, and as I made my way through the caravan park, I'd pretty much given up. It didn't seem like the right habitat to my inexperienced red squirrel seeking self, but it did open up to a beautiful stretch of coastline where several wading birds were a nice second prize. This Eurasian curlew was walking across the exposed nutrient rich mud perhaps looking for signs of worms or other buried creatures it could eat. Whilst this oyster catcher was taking a more active approach to finding food, probing into the sediment. I wonder if they just guess and go in blind, or if they can see signs of potential prey before probing for them. I walked back through the caravan park and although there were plenty of signs, quite literally, that red squirrels were in the area, I'm sorry to say I wasn't able to find one and to show it to you. I found a nice spot by the coast and watched as the sun slowly dropped in the sky. Today had reminded me how nothing with wildlife, or life overall, is guaranteed. I was struck by the kindness of pretty much everyone I spoke to on Mersey, and I recommend that you visit if you were ever in the area. But that is sadly where today's video has to come to an end. I am gonna be back here and I'm gonna find them red squirrels. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this one on the screen now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.